Hello, hello, and happy Tuesday, American Crochet Association. Selena Baca here, founder, host, lead educator with the ACA, and I'm really excited to be here today because October, the entire month of October, is what we like to call our anniversary month, um, and this month marks our fifth anniversary. So we're really excited to say that the American Crochet Association is now five years old. Gosh, I can't believe how much this baby is growing. So to celebrate our fifth anniversary, we're going to be doing some live classes just like this one throughout the month. If you're on our email list, then you did get an email last week with our newsletter that let you know what we were going to be doing and when. But just in case you're not on our newsletter yet, or maybe you didn't see that email yet, we're going to be streaming live at 3 p.m., of course, that's West Coast time, 6 p.m. East Coast time, and then just convert that wherever else you are in the world so that you guys can be here live if you'd like to be here live for these classes. And as always, if you can't follow along live, the replay is just as good, all right? So today, again, I've got a really fun live class to give you guys today, and it's a class we've never given live before. That's not typically what we do with the ACA. Um, so that's really, really exciting. Uh, the class we're going to give live today is about crochet borders and edging to include corners. Hmm, that's a fun topic. Um, I've actually recently seen in our group quite a few members were just asking very basic questions, general questions about crochet borders. And so I'm really excited to share this lesson today because I think that it's going to give you some knowledge and some power so that next time you want to crochet a border, you're going to understand how to approach it, okay? Now, stay tuned until the end because we do have a little bit of homework for you guys, right? Everything that we do at the ACA is to build your crochet knowledge and then apply it to build your skill. So at the end of the lesson, we're going to leave you with a video tutorial that you guys can complete on your own time. And hopefully with the lessons that we're giving you guys today, you can attach a border to it uh, using any stitch that you want. That's exciting, right? Okay. So again, if you're watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell us where you're viewing from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this class. I'm going to go through this live lesson. And then after the lesson, I'm going to pause. I'm going to see who's here. I'm going to give some shout outs. And if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, the floor is going to be open for some Q&A so we can make it a really fun conversation. All right. Okay. So this lesson again today, it is crochet edging and border. We've never given it live before. So this is the first time. If you guys are excited about that, let me know in the comments. Okay. Uh, also, if you guys are excited about this lesson, you want to share the love, share the experience, you guys are welcome to hit that share button so that my cat's talking to us so that we can share this love in other crochet communities as well, as well, if you'd like, okay? So this course, or sorry, this lesson is part of a course uh, within our crochet learning path, okay? There is a link in the video description, that way you guys can get more details on this. But if you're a member of the American Crochet Association and the learning path, then you already have access to this, okay? So if you're on our site, you click on learning path, you're gonna get all of the fun details. And again, the, the learning path, the crochet learning path is a 12 course program and scroll, 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 giving you all the information about who we are and what we do. Uh, this particular lesson is from our finishes course. Okay. So that finishes course has quite a few lessons. And if I scroll down here, of course, it's yarn join, stitch beginnings, borders and edges. So that's what we're going to be teaching you guys today. Okay. So that's where it is and how to get to it if you're interested, but I'm going to show you guys the whole lesson right now. Make some noise in the comments if you guys are really excited or at least throw up some reactions or something so I can see that you guys are there and totally stoked. Okay. If you are part of the crochet learning path and you've already taken this lesson, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Okay. Um, we just had a few students go through this and they were sharing their homework in our group community. So it was really exciting to see that. Uh, so again, if you've gone through this and you've done the homework, let me know, okay? All right, guys, here it is. This is part of our finishes course and the lesson is all about borders and edging. 
So with borders and edging, if you guys want that neat, perfect, clean, polished, flat crochet border that you see in this picture right here, it's not magic, it's science, it's all about the ratio. So to accomplish this, there is a ratio that you've got to understand so that you can apply uh, that all stitches have. So it doesn't matter what stitch it is, single, half, double, double, triple. And we're gonna go over that and give you guys the science behind that. Now, when you learn this ratio, you can create borders and edges like a pro. And that way, every single border you create is going to be perfectly flat, perfectly even. It looks really clean. Um, and there's even different uh, placements that you can use that can keep it new and hip and interesting and fresh, okay? So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about stitch ratio, including corners. Corners are very, very important. We're gonna talk a little bit about stitch placement because where you place your stitches can make it look really nice or not very nice. And then we're gonna talk about different border designs. Now in crochet, every stitch has what we call a stitch ratio, okay? So the next few topics we're gonna to cover are horizontal stitch ratio. So what you're looking at right here with these pictures show swatches, the double, the half double, the single. So imagine row number one and then the last row, imagine those are the horizontal edges, okay? So that's what we're talking about with horizontal stitch ratio. So those are the first and last rows of a project. And those, the bottom and the top, have a one-to-one -one stitch ratio, okay? What does that mean? It means that any stitch that you use, it doesn't matter if it's single, half double, double, triple, it doesn't matter what the stitch is on those horizontal edges, one stitch is gonna fit on top of one stitch. So maybe you have a, a foundation row of single crochets and maybe your project ends with double crochets, it doesn't matter. You still have a one-to-one -one stitch ratio, okay? And those are interchangeable, the top and bottom, okay? One-to-one -one stitch ratio. You guys with me so far? Let me know what you think. Okay, so we talked about horizontal, that's row one and the last row, whatever that may be, that's horizontal stitch ratios. Now let's talk about vertical stitch ratios. Now those vertical stitch ratios are the sides of your stitches, the actual post of your stitches, not the top, not the bottom, but the actual side. So this is typically where we get into trouble whenever we're applying borders. And this is what's so important, okay? Now, when we're working into those vertical sides or post of the stitch, um, every single stitch has, a, has an entirely new ratio, okay? This ratio is determined by that height of the stitch, right? So single crochet is a different height than half double, than double, than triple, right? Those all have different heights. So the longer the stitch is, the higher the stitch ratio is gonna be, okay? So let's take a peek at this picture and then let's look at that stitch ratio information under the picture, okay? So if you're working into the vertical sides of single crochet stitches, those are easy. You've got a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every single crochet end row, that vertical side, you place one stitch of any kind and it's gonna give you a nice flat even border. And that way, if you have 10 rows of single crochet uh, stitches, how many stitches fit on the side? 10. So let's go to half double crochet. This is where it gets a little tricky. Half double crochet is a tricky stitch. Uh, so for a half double crochet, what makes those, if you only have half double crochet end rows, or if you are if you have a project where you have to apply stitches to the vertical ends of half double crochet, it's typically three stitches over two stitches. So that's a little, that's, it gets a little, it gets a little funky, I should say, right? Because it's not really a perfectly round number. So what does that mean? And we'll talk about what, how you can apply that and how you can really have fun with that in just a minute. But just for now, imagine you have uh, four half double crochet end rows, okay? So to, to make that even, how many stitches grows, goes across four half double crochet end rows? Well, it's not one on each one, and it's not two on each one. So what you may have to do is put two here and one here to give you three over here. Or maybe you skip this one and put three here. So it gets a little funny, and really it's gonna depend on the height of that stitch, your tension, maybe the yarn you're using. You might have to play with that one just a little bit more. 
Double crochet, it's leg single because it's easy. So with the height of that vertical stitch, you're going to place two stitches in ev into every double crochet end row. So let's pretend we have four double crochet end rows vertically, right? So it's literally two per end row. So if you have four end rows, you should have eight stitches going across. Triple crochet, again, it's pretty easy. You should have three stitches per triple crochet end row. So if you have four triple crochet end rows, then it's three times four, that's 12 stitches over the end of that row. Does that make sense, guys? What do you guys think about that? Did you already kind of know this ratio? Does it make sense? Do you guys think that maybe you could look at the end of your stitches, whether it's single, half double, double, or triple, and know how to apply this ratio? Let me know. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear them. Okay. Corners are a little different. This is an entirely different kind of ratio, okay? Because you guys may understand the horizontal, right? That's super easy. I know it's one-to-one. -one. And then even the vertical, you guys may go, okay, you know, I had you until half double crochet, so maybe I'll just have to apply that a little bit before I get it, but I got it. But what about those corners? They get their own ratio depending on the stitch that you use, okay? So whatever stitch you're applying to that border, you're going to have a different ratio to make sure that you have that nice, clean, flat corner that's not going to pucker and that's not going to ruffle. And the trick here, you know, maybe you can do this for one row, maybe anybody can, can wing it or round, but if you want more than one rounds, then really that's where this is going to come in handy, okay? So if you want those nice big crochet borders and you want them to be flat and crisp and not puckered and not ruffled, here's where the magic is. So to accomplish, uh, to accomplish this flat corner, the height of the stitch that you use around the border is going to determine how many stitches total you're going to add to that corner, okay? So we're going to talk about this in just a minute, but know that you can incorporate just stitches or stitches and chains into a corner. So know that the stitch counts that I'm giving you that can incorporate both of those. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. So let's say you're applying a border using single crochet stitches and you get to a corner. How many single crochet stitches should you put in that corner? The, the answer is between three and four. Two is not enough, five is too many. So really three or four is th that sweet spot. If you're using half double crochet stitches to go around, the sweet spot is between four and five. Double crochet is also four and five. And triple crochet is between five and six. So again, sometimes you may just have to play with those numbers a little bit because your tension is gonna have a lot to do with this what kind of yarn you're using is going to have a lot to do with this. And also, you know, are you using other stitches? Are you really incorporating some kind of stitch multiple uh, to make this a little more fancy? That might have something to do with it as well. Okay, corners. Now we talked about the ratio, depending on the stitch that you're using, that's going to give you that nice flat uh, corner. But you may go, wait a minute. How do you, or what do those numbers mean, you know, pertaining to different styles of corners? Well, there are two types of corners, right? We're talking about corners, 90 degree angles, right? So you can create a round corner, and a round corner means there aren't any chains there, but you're still, you still want that nice, uh, it's 90 degrees, but it's not that perfect point, right? So if you want that look, if you want that scalloped look, then you're not going to add any chains. So for example, there's a single crochet border here on the left-hand side. So to make that nice even border, um, you use between three and four stitches. Maybe you use four just to really make that a nice, uh, a nice rounded border. Or you might find, nope, three's enough. Okay. Another border that we see here is pointed. And to get that nice pointed look, you do have to incorporate chains. It needs that, it needs that defining point right, thou, right there. And you're going to get that with a chain. So what we're looking at here on the right-hand side is double crochet stitches. And we can see here that there's a double crochet. It looks like chain one, chain two, chain three. 
excuse me, and then double crochet. So it looks like we got a nice 90 degree angle right here with five stitches. So we see that with these both of these um, both of these rounds of border here because this light blue has the same three the same stitch count. Uh, we can see a double crochet right here, then chain one, chain two, chain three, double crochet. So we're replicating that, those five stitches on the first round of the border, five stitches on the second round of the border. And as we go back to our corners right here, we see double crochet has between four and five, and we use five to give it that nice pointed corner. So let me know what you guys think about corners so far. Do these stitch ratios make sense? Does this seem like something you'd be able to apply to add a border, a simple border, if nothing else, to your crochet project? I'd love to hear in the comments. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about stitch placement, okay? Uh, tall stitches, because we're talking about vertical here, okay, so those really tall stitches on the sides uh, you can work your stitches directly around the fabric of that design. And we see that here on the left hand side. We see that there are tall double crochet stitches and we've literally just placed our stitches around the post of those vertical stitches. And we can see that application looks pretty nice, right? And when we're looking at these stitches, we can go back to what we know about those vertical ratios and we can say, ah, oh, that's a double crochet vertical end row, I know that I should put two double crochet stitches there. And if I do that going all the way down, that's gonna give me that flat, nice, even border. Now, another thing that we can do is, is look at this single crochet border over here on the right-hand side, okay? Now, a single crochet border can be added to your design first as either an anchor for the actual border that you wanna add on there. As we can see here, really that single crochet was just that anchor. And what I mean by anchor is, you know, wait, I wanna get my placement right, I wanna make sure that I'm adding, you know, my ratio correctly, and then I wanna maybe do something else, right? So if you do that uh, with your single crochet stitches, you can do that with contrasting colors, you can start with a single crochet border with the same color to create this really nice, even foundation for whatever border you want to add on that. And also single crochet borders can set the foundation for easy, you know, easier counting for a more complex border. So it can really set that foundation for you. Okay, this is one of my favorite tips and it's something that as soon as I realized I could do this, my crochet blankets looked 10 times better. It's literally one of my favorite applications. It's one of my favorite tips. And I notice that every single time I apply this versus when I don't apply this, my projects look fantastic. Okay. So whenever you're adding borders and let's just say, oh, this is so simple. It's just, you know, a one-to-one -one ratio. Perfect. So um, what I want you to consider is that while it may be a one-to-one -one ratio, or two to one, whatever your ratio is, think about grouping up your stitches um, because the, the grouping of those stitches is going to give you a nicer balance. Now, let me talk about what that means for a second. So here on the top, you see an image of, um, of an Afghan that I have. And of course, you know, the, the horizontal rows, super easy, but those vertical rows, they're double crochet. And um, what I could have done was just place one single crochet stitch all the way across those horizontal rows. I could have done that. But then when you get to the vertical rows, you want to create something that looks even, right? So I can't really place one single crochet stitch into every double crochet row. We know we can't do that. So it's not gonna give us that same look if we place one going all the way across the horizontal rows. So because I wanted to give the same look, no matter what side you're looking at, I grouped my stitches together. So on the horizontal rows, I grouped together uh, two single crochet stitches into one spot, and then I skipped one spot, and then I put two into one, and then I skipped one, to where we're maintaining the ratio, but we're grouping those stitches, so that way, 
it gives it a different look, but it has the same stitch count. And therefore I can apply that same concept to the vertical rows. And therefore I can place maybe uh, four single crochet stitches into one end row and then skip the next double crochet end row. That way I still have two stitches per row in terms of uh, what the ratio is, but it's all about the placement and that's giving me that same grouping look that I have on the other row. Now, if that doesn't make sense or if you feel like it doesn't matter, I want you to take a peek at the, at the two images that I have on the bottom. And what you're looking at is the right side and the wrong side, the front side of the fabric and the back side of the fabric. And I chose this gray with this vibrant pink just so you can really see what I'm talking about. Alternatively, if you don't do that stitch grouping, your stitches are gonna have that one-to-one -one ratio and it might look, I call it stabby, right? I call it these stabby spikes because really you're just seeing one stitch into every end row. And in my opinion, it looks less attractive than kind of grouping your stitches together. Whenever you group your stitches together, just know that it's okay to be plus or minus one. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I have 10 double crochet end rows. I absolutely have to have 20 single crochet stitches going all the way across in some kind of variation, you know, I know that that's not a perfect example because of course it's going to even out better, but think about half double crochets or triple crochets. If, you, if you're if you plus or minus one stitch, it's gonna be okay. Really it's when you're, uh, when you're plus or minus like 10, 20, 30, that's where you get into rippling. When you're minus 10, 20, 30, that's when you start to pucker. So getting as close as possible with that grouping that's going to be perfect. Okay, so let's take a let's take a peek at a few examples that I put together. Okay, so here's one example of a fillet crochet, just a little swatch, right? And the reason I love swatches is because it helps you to apply potential. So let's say we were making this and, and we want it to eventually be a blanket, but we want to know what kind of border to put on us. And maybe you don't want to do just single crochet all the way around. Maybe you really want to kind of elevate that look and you kind of want to play with other stitches. Okay, so in this particular example here, we've got a vertical count um, of 22 stitches. And what? how did we get that? Well, there's 11 rows of double crochet times two. So there's 22 stitches on the side. Horizontal stitch count, right? Row one, last row, is 23 stitches. So that means one to one, because we know it's one to one, no matter the stitch, there's 23 stitches. Because there's a double crochet stitch applied to the border, we know that the corners need a ratio of at least five stitches, right? Remember we said four or five, but we want, we're using chains, so it's okay to use five. And that way what we're looking at here is double crochet, chain three, double crochet, and that gives us those nice pointy 90 degree angles, nice flat borders, okay? so. That is just some of the math applied to a basic swatch. So no matter what kind of stitch you're looking at, that's how you get, uh, that's how you determine how to apply the border, right? Is those, the horizontal counts, the vertical counts, and what kind of corners you want. All right, let's take a peek at another border on the same exact design. It's this Afghan I keep showing you guys, right? So this is the exact same stitch batter, pattern. It's still that fillet squares, right? Um, so the vertical counts for this, the sides, I'm just, you can't see the entire afghan, but I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you. There's 86 stitches, okay? How did I get 86? Well, there are 43 rows and it's double crochet. So 43 times two, 86. So I need 86 stitches on each side to make that border nice and flat and even. Now the horizontal stitch count, row one and the last row going across, there are 65 stitches. And of course that's one-to-one -one ratio. So 65 here, 65 here, 86 here, 86 here. The corners are solid single crochet stitches. And we know from that ratio for that stitch that we can put about three or four in there, but because we want a nice rounded border, we put three that we, I, I put three stitches there to give it that nice rounded border. And as you can see here, there are one, two, three, four, five, um, five rounds here. 
and you can see that it's nice and flat and even and that corner is sharp so it's not skewed it's not going this way it's not going that way and that's not just a small representation of this afghan using these stitch ratios really did make this entire afghan flat and even in every single corner it looks that way Okay, one last example for you guys, okay? So here's another little stitch swatch for you. Stitch swatch for you. Um, and here we can see that it's double crochet uh, stitches all along the sides, okay? And there are seven rows of double crochet. And we know double crochet has a stitch ratio of two. So seven times two, 14 stitches. So I need 14 stitches here, 14 stitches here. The horizontal counts, row one and final row, are 22 stitches. So I need 22 stitches here and 22 stitches here. And the corners, as you can see, because we're applying a double crochet stitch and we want that 90 degree point, uh, we, we have applied five stitches, okay? So let's just take a peek at what that looks like here. Seven, uh, seven rows of double crochet, that means two stitches per end row because it's a nice long stitch I put two double crochet stitches into every single end row. So here we see two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Remember I said you guys can be plus or minus one? Well, I wanted to maintain that nice, flat, even border. So I used one of those double crochet stitches as part of my corner. So here I have double crochet, chain three, double crochet. And the double crochet here, yes, it counts as the uh, vertical side, but it also counts, uh, you know, into that corner. And I did the same thing with the vertical stitch counts. Again, horizontal counts, 22 stitches. Well, let's count the double crochets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, because the counters, the corners count, 22, 23. Do you guys see how that works? I had 22 stitches going across. I'm utilizing those corners to make sure that I have those 22 going across. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay, stitch multiples. Have you guys heard of stitch multiples as it pertains to stitch patterns? Uh, like maybe you want to make a fun lacy pattern, or maybe it's a pineapple stitch, or maybe it's a waffle stitch, whatever it is, you've probably heard of stitch multiples, right? Well, just like those crochet stitch patterns in rounds or in rows, these ornate uh, borders that you see, and we haven't really shown a whole lot of ornate borders, borders in this class so far. Really, it's a very simple application. But those ornate borders are written in stitch multiples. And we've got some really cool resources to share with you guys as well. So some tips to apply those really ornate borders, right? Make sure that you guys count your vertical left and right sides and horizontal first and last rows because those stitches independently are not always gonna be the same. What do I mean by that? Let's say you're making a 30 inch baby blanket by 40 inch, okay? they're not going to be exactly the same. So make sure that your stitch multiples are counted effectively here and they're counted effectively here. You're not always gonna be making a perfect square. Even if it is a perfect square, it doesn't mean the stitch counts are, or in the stitch ratios are gonna be the same for here and here. So definitely do that math. Uh, sometimes you may want to add a single crochet border first to really solidify or slightly alter the foundation stitch multiple. So let's say you want to apply a stitch multiple of a shell stitch like you should see right here, right? So maybe that shell stitch is multiples of five plus one. Well, you have to make sure that your stitch ratios can accommodate that five plus one with reason, within reason, right? We can always be plus or minus a few. But uh, if you want to apply something even more ornate, make sure you understand what the multiple is and make sure you understand how you can apply it to your border. Okay, I've got some homework for you guys. Who's excited about homework? Who wants to build their knowledge and apply that knowledge into skill? If you do, uh, I'm gonna share a video resource for you guys, and that video resource is gonna help you to make this fillet squares swatch right here, okay? 
So uh, when you complete that swatch, what I want you guys to do is take the concepts that we taught you within this lesson to apply uh, a border. So you're going to make two swatches here. And the first swatch, what you're going to do is apply a double crochet border, okay? So after you make that one swatch of this fillet squares, place a border on this design using the double crochet stitch, okay? So my, my suggestion is you can put a solid double crochet all the way around. So that way it's literally just double crochet, no spaces, or you can apply a, you can get kind of creative with it, a double crochet border with chain spaces. So for example, those vertical end rows are double crochets, so you need two stitches. You might go double crochet, chain one for every single end row, just to kind of give it a little bit of flair. Okay, then I want you to create another swatch, okay, and apply that same concept to, to add a single crochet border all the way around, okay? Now, after you make your second swatch, place a border on the design using the single crochet stitch. And again, it can be solid going all the way around, or you can apply it using some variation of chain spaces, okay? And that includes the corners. I can't wait to see you guys' corners, all right? Okay, we do have some additional resources to share with you guys. Again, this is just a basic, a, a beginning of understanding how borders are applied. Uh, so if you really want to create the most ornate and fantastic and exceptional crochet borders ever, we definitely recommend Every Which Way uh, Crochet Borders. It's a fantastic book. I have a copy um, and it's, it's a really fun uh, deep dive into crochet borders. We actually have a review of this book on our blog right now. I'm going to share the details of that because that, uh, that review of this book does include a giveaway. So side note, side note, we're also giving away a copy of this book signed by the author, I should say. That's an exciting little fun note. And of course, that is going to be uh, live during our birthday month. And for full details, please click on over to the blog link that I'm going to share with you guys in the video description so you guys can enter or get more details on that. Uh, same author, another kind of border book. We also recommend Crochet Borders Around the Corner. This is another fantastic book, again, by the same author that you should definitely check out if you want to learn everything you can possibly learn about crochet borders. All right, everyone, that is it. Thank you so much for joining this class. Now, if you guys follow along, if you do the homework, if you have questions, comments, feedback, if you just want to be part of the community and have a conversation, come on over to our Facebook group because that's where our community really has conversations on topics just like this. And on that note, I'm going to pause. I'm going to see who's here. I'm going to say, hey, hello, how's it going to everyone here? And I can't wait to see what kind of questions you guys have. Lucinda's here. Happy Tuesday, Lucinda. So good to see you. Sherry, congratulations, she says, from New York. Thank you so much. We're really excited to be celebrating five years with everyone. Chris Lopez is here. Hello, Chris. Always so good to see you. Pam is here. Hello. She says it's Wednesday morning where she is. Thank you for joining us. Elaine Smith. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, Donna Clark is here. She says, hi, Selena and Crochet family. It's been a minute since I've been here. Well, it's good to see you here today. Thank you for joining us. Depali is here. Depali, it's always a pleasure to see your face. Francis is here from New Jersey. Thank you so much for checking in. Depali says, this is interesting. She's got the drum roll too. She was excited and ready to go. Francis is very happy to be here today. Pam has got all the star eyes. Chris Lopez has got the claps for us. Nora, hello. It's so good to see you. Francis, she's got all the hearts. Good. All right, Pam is excited to be here. Pam says, I needed to know this yesterday. Well, hopefully, oh my gosh, why can't I keep you there? Hopefully, again, this is going to be lifelong knowledge for you guys. Because again, once you understand that there are ratios, you can kind of play with uh, the kinds of crochet projects that you make. And that way you can apply those nice, even flat borders. So again, if this is new stuff for you, if you could just really want to hone in on these skills, definitely do the homework that we're sharing with you guys because that's going to be a really excellent way for you guys to apply these skills uh, so that you guys can be lifelong learners. 
Chris Lopez, even after all these years, I have trouble with this. This is great info. She says, makes perfect sense. Good. I'm so glad to hear. Nicole Lawrence is with us with the thumbs up and the smiles. Pam. Oh, there's your comment. She says, nope, did not know there was one. Makes sense. Felt my way with this on half double crochet yesterday, and it looks okay, but it could look a lot better knowing this. Thank you. Fortunately, yarn bombing free form and not a blanket. Yeah, no matter what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you're making a sweater or a dishcloth or a blanket or whatever you're making, this information doesn't change. So these stitch ratios stay the same no matter what you're making. And these concepts stay the same no matter what you're making. So it's all about what stitches you're using. Pam, she says, absolutely also so useful when designing Afghan squares. Dipali, absolutely makes sense, never knew until I took this course. I know you actually just graduated from this program. So uh, it's wonderful to hear you say that. Thank you. And she says, it's very clear. Francis says, makes sense. Pam says, love that crochet is so forgiving like this. It's possible to feel your way. I think that crochet can be very forgiving as long as you understand the math involved. And as long as you understand the ratios, then you can apply that to be very forgiving, you know, plus or minus one here or there, or how do I make a rounded border? Or should I make a rounded or a pointy border? So I think just having this information really helps to guide you to make really creative decisions that are going to look beautiful. Chris Lopez, that border looks so neat and awesome. Brooke, she says, I like to put it in a round of the same color for borders then whatever I do isn't as noticed, then put in a contrasting color. Yeah, there's so many different ways you can apply this information. So after you guys go through and do the homework, hopefully that will inspire you to see different kinds of applications. Maybe everything is one color. Maybe you want it to be that one color. Uh, maybe you really need that contrast. You guys will have the ability to get creative and it's still going to look beautiful. Hello, Angel. So good to see you here. Pam, did not realize was a signed copy. I adore Edie Ekman. Have those other two books. Yes, actually, I am a huge fan of Edie Ekman. And when I told her we were doing a giveaway of this book on the blog, I reached out to her and I asked her if we could get some signed copies. And she said yes. So I'm super excited to be providing that to you guys. Uh, hello, Monica. So good to see you. And Rosetta Williams has just got the heart emoji. Awesome. Okay, everybody, that's all the questions, comments, feedback that I see from you guys. I think I've given everybody a shout out. I was so excited to be giving these live lessons uh, on, uh, on our Tuesdays during our anniversary month for the American Crochet Association. So again, if you guys enjoyed this lesson, if you felt like there were things uh, that are going to help better your crochet life, please hit that share button, share this video with a crochet community or a crochet friend that you think this could really help them. Okay, we'd really appreciate it. All right, everyone, we will see you again this time next week for another live video lesson from the American Crochet Association. Peace, love, crochet. See you next time. Bye-bye.